Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden. I'm Simon Kelly. And he's Max Jeffcott. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about, it's one of my favorite topics, and it is getting paid. It's quite important if you are a WordPress consultant. We'll also be talking about some things that happened, including material designed uh, theming tool from Google that's come out, uh, a tutorial, a development tutorial about creating a settings panel in WooCommerce, some harsh truths about life and freelancing. Stay with us. Welcome everybody to another episode of Silence is Golden and welcome Troy. Thank how you, you doing man? I'm very well man, how are you? Good, looking Excellent. sharp. You've, Thank uh, you mate. You've gone away from the, the classic black tea and gone yeah. with something with to, a colour. Trying to up the game a little bit, you oh, know? Yeah. trying to bring a bit of colour into the uh, into the show. I know? have about three outfits I just recycle and I'm sure everybody probably knows this, it's very mm. easy to spot. Is this number one or two or three? <laughs> uh, this, yeah, one. Number this one. This is one. This is the go-to, is it? Yeah, easy. Oh. This is the easy, a little bit cold. This is perfect for it. Excellent. It's cold in Melbourne at the moment. It is very cold, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and the truth is I have a bit of an internet shopping addiction, so I just keep every day there's new clothes turn up for me. Uh -huh, so right. If anybody would like to sponsor the way that we look on the show <laughs> and has some clothes that they would like to just send us every week to try, uh, feel free. Send them to Silence is Golden at 231 Chapel Street, Pran, 3181 in Victoria, Australia. I think we're both mediums. Yep. So I'm looking at you. Whoever you are. Whoever you are. <laughs> yeah. All right, some other things happened this week, so why don't we take a look? Stop the happen. So I'm a big fan of materials design from Google. Do you mm, like their I do. style? Yeah, yep. it's awesome. I and do. a new tool that they released this week that I couldn't use, but it's uh, the article's great anyway. Um, they've got a uh, theming tool for um for material design. So a problem that's happened in the past is that. Uh, and this happened with Bootstrap as well, is when developers and um, designers were creating things with material design guidelines, they would look the same. Uh, and it, there wasn't anything really unique about it. So everything was looking like Google, and Google was looking like everything. So the theming tool is about be making it easier to be able to put in some brand colors and styles, and then material design will do the hard work to create the theme for you, so it is a bit more unique, but it follows their guidelines. Um, it's a plugin for Sketch. Uh, at the moment, I installed it and it did nothing, but you know, I might try a bit harder next time. Uh, but yeah, look, it's looking pretty good. It's, uh, I like this step that Google are taking to be able to make things that they do look a bit prettier and uh, a bit more useful um, because some of their stuff can look a bit crap. It's because go. it's designed by engineers. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Does what it says on the tin, but yeah. it's not pretty. Yeah. But it, but it does that. Mm. Um, but it looks awful. No, but it does the thing. <laughs> what do you right. want? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, there's a tutorial out from Envato Tutes about how to create a custom settings panel in WooCommerce. Ooh. So this is a development tutorial with, uh, it says, intermediate level of difficulty. Uh, it's a pretty good one, like really easy to follow. Uh, it's good if you want to get, um, get your head around um, some PHP functions and a good way to structure a plugin for WooCommerce. So if you're into that, go for it. Uh, but if you're not, don't. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a good dev tutorial there. Uh, and then, so two other articles are more about mindset. So this isn't as such news, like these are new articles that came out. So one of them is four tips for overcoming your greatest challenge as a freelancer. Can you guess what that challenge might be? Getting paid. It is one of them, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sales. It's yeah. like how to sell the thing that you do and mm. Like everyone gets really comfortable doing the thing that they do, mm. but you have to actually sell it. You're not mm. going to survive just continuously design. You have to actually make someone buy something mm. from you or convince yeah. them. So uh, they talk about, um, this is from Freelancers Union, which yeah, their articles are great. Talk about actively finding new projects, keeping that pipeline full. Um, they talk about sales as a predictable process mm -hmm. as opposed to something that you like have to be really fearful of. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a, quite a good article. There's a good, quite a few good points in there. Um, and just making sure that you are dedicating some time to doing selling and reaching out and networking. And it's not as much of a you know, dirty topic and a complex thing as some people uh, tend to think it is. I, I have a theory that a lot of people think I'm a good salesperson and the truth is I don't like sales very much at all. Mm. It's a bit like desperate dating. I don't like selling, but I love marketing. Mm. And so my theory is that the better marketer you are, 
the less selling you actually have to do. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, you don't have to force it upon people mm, as much. That's right. Yeah. So wh wh how do you draw the line between marketing and sales? Well, marketing is designed to pull people into your sphere of influence, whereas mm. selling is designed to, you know, sales is when you're pitching something at someone and you're pushing a message to someone, whereas marketing is when you're putting a message out there and you're attracting people to you. Mm -hmm. And if you do a good enough job attracting the right people to you, then you don't have to do the selling. Yeah, so like attract, attracting versus pitching. Basically. Correct. Yeah. yeah, nice, Correct. there you go. Uh, be attractive is what Troy's trying to Thank say and sponsor us with some new Max outerwear. Is, Max is telling me that my microphone's in a bad position, so I'll just move it. There we go. Now hopefully you can hear me a bit better. <laughs> cool. Excellent. And there's another article that is um, I thought was really <laughs> interesting. It's quite, quite powerful, this one. 19 harsh truths you don't want to hear but must. And I won't go through them all here, but just a couple of headlines there. Other, we all have the same problems, so don't think you're a unique snowflake is one of them. Uh, you don't need experience ever. There's quite a few controversial things in here. It's really just like, stop thinking that you're the only one who feels like this and thinks like this and just get to it. Get to your dreams and just make them happen because the truth is we're not gonna be around for a long time. So there you go. Mm -hmm. It's a feel good story for the morning. Yeah. I, I thought it was an awesome article. Like. Um, yeah, the comments get a bit heated in there, but have a read uh, and let me know what you think because I, I thought it was great. I love mindset related things. So My favourite's number four. What's that one? Complaining is a fucking waste of time. <laughs> it's a good one. So yeah. stop complaining, the arch. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> there we go. Yep. Um, all right. Hey, while we're upping the ante here and getting a little bit aggro, why don't we talk about what pissed you off this week? This pisses me off. All right, I think we can both relate to this one. And it's, it's doing small changes for clients for free after you've done the website. Now, how many people, like if you've, I don't know if comments are getting around there. If, how, many, how many people who are listening are doing that right now? I, have, have you done that before? Just you know, give, us a, give us a hell no in the comments if, um, if that's something you've done before and you're never going to do again. Because it, you cannot sustain your business doing that. A mechanic can't just keep fixing your car for free after they've serviced your car once. It's just not gonna work. I know a lot of people who have successful companies as well and they still get the, the mindset where they're doing some things for free and they're like, oh, I've done it again. But they keep learning and just keep improving. But just don't do it. You can't build your business. You can't build anything profitable. You cannot help anyone if you're broke. Mm. So you have to be charging for, for what you're doing. Yeah. Keely Worth uh, from um, Melbourne says, yep, Ooh. oh, sorry. <laughs> See you, mate. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> Trigger happy. Keely Worth says... To, um, to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the instant replay. Uh, it's very there. good, isn't it, hey? Yep. Keely Worth <laughs> says, yep, so small, I don't bother charging. Keely, 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 Keely. What the hell is the matter with you, girl? Why don't you charge? What do you mean? Uh, let's get in an Uber, right? I'll tell you what, you get in an Uber and take the Uber to the milk bar and say, oh, listen, mate, that was just a very short trip. I won't bother paying. Like, how far do you think that's gonna get you? Why are you not charging? Keely? I'm watching you, Keely. Uh, you've got to start charging. And the easiest way to start charging for those little jobs that you're doing is to just get your clients on a care plan, of course. Mm -hmm. A WordPress care plan, where you look after their website on a monthly basis. You can include all of those little things that you wouldn't charge for, and you can charge them a nominal amount of whatever is profitable for your business uh, to keep doing that. Because here's the truth, right? If you keep doing those little changes on clients' websites for free and you don't charge them, you will eventually run out of money and you will have to go and get a job. And then you won't be able to service any of your clients. Keely says she's working on a care plan. Excellent. Thank you, Keely. Thanks for being a part of it. And thanks for uh, letting us get stuck into you on live on Facebook. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There you go. So there's some other people that need help in the community. Oh. Uh, so we've got a few questions. So let's see if we can help some people get unstuck. Let's get unstuck. All right. <laughs> so today's question comes from our Facebook group. And as I say that, I'm buying time so I can pick one. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Who's well it going to be? Well, 
Ren says, and this isn't exactly a question, I never ever had a problem getting paid. I simply ask for it with words, out loud, in person or over <laughs> the phone. That's a good tip. It's a great tip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great tip. Easy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, I, I had to take a bloke to court once because he owed me some money and he kept making up all these amazing excuses. Um, the first couple of times I believed him when he told me that uh, his mother had passed away. I said, oh, I'm very sorry to hear about that, David. That's okay. Just, you know, pay me next week. Um, and then he, uh, the week later, his sister apparently, uh, her house had burnt down in England and his sister and her children had died. Oh my and I God. said, oh, I'm terribly sorry, David. Hang on a second. That sounds like bullshit. <laughs> and it was bullshit. So I eventually took him to court and at the last minute, I had the paperwork I was about to sign. He owed me two and a half grand, right? Mm. And anything over $2,000 in Australia, you can take people to what's called the Small Claims Tribunal and you can actually send them bankrupt. You can actually force them to declare bankruptcy if they can't pay your bill, your debt, anything over $2,000. Anything under two grand and it's not worth chasing them. And I had the paperwork and I was about to sign off to actually tell him that he was going to have to file bankruptcy. He had a history of doing this, by the way. He would move offices because... Every time I went and, and visited him, he was in a different office because he'd been evicted because he hadn't paid the rent. What all a stressful his life. All his furniture would get repossessed because he hadn't paid the bill. Oh I know, God. completely stressful. Anyway, I had debt collectors calling him at two o'clock in the morning and, you know, asking him to pay the bill, you know. Wow. I know, imagine living like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was about to sign the paperwork and he eventually uh, uh, rang my debt collector and said, oh, I've just deposited $1,800 into the bank account and that's all I can pay. So I ended up losing 700 bucks that he owed me and you know a few debt collection fees and stuff um but the point is that uh it's i i now understand through that experience that it is the height of rudeness to have someone do some work for you and not pay them you've been paid by the way haven't you uh, no actually right. we're max we're you've been late. paid <laughs> we paid your bill no no one here gets paid no one here gets paid but we get paid that's um, all that matters. Yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah, you just want, don't want to get in that situation in the first place, no. right? And collecting payments up front is one no. of the good ways to do that. But we're going to get into that in a little bit later. Right, but we, are, we do have right. a question from Michael M. Rumpf. And I'm just going to summarize this one a bit, Michael, because it, it does kind of go into what you were talking about, Troy. It's like having, um, Michael's having an issue with a client whom he granted to pay the invoice back in installments. Um, he granted then to put the project on hold, hold for six months. But, needless to say, there were no payments after that at all. So, you know, the project's been delivered, you can pay it back in installments, and then the client doesn't pay. So legal assistance has to come in, uh, but the point here seems to be to not get into this situation in the first place. Exactly right, Michael. So how can you, how can you deal with this? How can you get this kind of work in? How do you structure your payments so that... You, get, you don't get into the situation in so, the first place. So, uh, well, we used to do 50 50, 50 upfront, 50 on delivery, right? Mm -hmm. We stopped doing that after a period of time because what we realized is that you pay, you get the 50% deposit upfront, you do all the work, and then the client says, Oh, I don't have my content ready, Simon. And then you're left holding a website with no content in it and they disappear. Um, but you've done 100% of the, the work. work. Correct. All you do is put the content in, right? Yep. And so now what we do is we do 50, 40, 10 or 50, 20, 20, 10. So 50 up front before we start anything, 20% on prototype, 20% on delivery of website, and the final 10% is when it goes live. And if you disappear with your content between me delivering and, and going live, well, you know, that last 10% is just margin anyway. That last 10% is pure profit for me. So I'm ahead at that point, 50% on booking, 20% on prototype, we're good, yeah. You're gonna get fruity on your content and disappear. Okay, I'm backing off, I'm not doing anything. You've got a prototype which you've paid for. Then, here's the website, it's ready for your content. Another 20%, yeah, and at that point, I'm in the clear. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's profitable. If you disappear and don't pay that final 10%, well, it's unfortunate, but I'm not going under. Whereas if you do 50 upfront and 50 on delivery, you set yourself up and you are vulnerable to um, you know, holding a bunch of client websites without content. Now, a friend of mine, big shout out to uh, James from OM4. Uh, he said to me once, they do project management fees. So mm -hmm. if you disappear with your content, they'll just start charging you 150 bucks a week as a project management fee to keep your project active. If you don't want to pay that, then they'll archive your project. And that will end up in file 13 on the server down the hall, third door on the left, which isn't there. 
It's called the bin. That's where your project goes. That's otherwise known as File 13. Did you ever know that? No. It's I, a good one. I, Level 13, yeah, I, yeah. I thought it would be some file place 13. doesn't exist. Where, where's the paperwork? It's in File 13, which means the trash. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> or the other, the other way to say it is, oh, yes, we're going to recommence your project on the 13th. Yeah. The 13th of when? The 13th of never. Exactly. <laughs> Dad joke. So, Michael also <laughs> says, like, what about, um, you know, the feeling bad part of it? What about um, clients bad. that say they're in an, an economic... Economic, they don't have a good economic I, I, situation. I, I, you should have thought about that before you commissioned us to build your fucking website. Before you I, bought the Your Lamborghini. economic problems are your economic problems, not my economic problems. This really shits me to no end, right? Mm. I mean, you get a, I'm, I'm, tomorrow I'm flying up to Brisbane mm -hmm. with the family, right? My mm -hmm. wife's going to a two day psychology conference in Brisbane. We're getting in a car tomorrow morning at our place it's going right. with Oscar in the baby seat. We're driving out to the airport. We're going to pay the driver once we get there. I'm not going to say, oh, sorry, mate. I can't pay you now because I'm having some economic problems. Mm. Oh, I'm just about to get on do? business class. You're going to take me out of the car and punch the shit out of me in the middle of the airport. Right? <laughs> then I'm getting on a plane. We're flying up to Brisbane. I've already paid for it, right? We're booked into a hotel, right? I can't say to any of those people, oh, I'm really sorry. You're going to have to spot me for six months because I'm having some economic problems. I don't care about your economic problems. I'm here to build you a website. I'm not your financial advisor. Yeah. You can't really build a business on best intentions and economic issues, right? It's not even a, it's not even a conversation. Like, just stop right. caring. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you, you know, you, at some point, you have to swallow some grumpy pills and you have to hang your heart up at the door. We are in business. This is not a community service. This is not the tuck shop for the local soccer team where we all volunteer. This is a business, okay? Um, if you've got economic problems, I'm very sorry, but they're your problems, not mine. Go and see a financial planner, get your shit together, and pay my bill. Exactly. We do have a few more tips about on, getting then. paid. Oh, yeah, go yeah. on. So let's, um, okay. we'll, we'll, I think we're getting close to, to diving into the gold <laughs> nugget, so let's, let's dive in right now. Time to dig into the gold nugget. That As you might that guess. Wasn't, that wasn't too much, you know? No, it was, it was great. Was that was short. awesome. Wasn't too much. Yeah, yeah. You get too far? No, no, no. no. Okay. Not far enough. Okay. Oh, shit, yeah. we're back on. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, as you might have guessed, uh, today's today's topic, this week's topic, is about getting paid as a WordPress consultant. It is one of the most important things you need in business because your business needs money to breathe, basically. It doesn't survive on other people saying, yeah, sure, I'll pay you later after this happens, and I just need to get some money in. It's like, no, 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 you shouldn't. If you get to that point where a client's saying to you, I just need to get, I just need to get paid first, mm. you did, massive red flag. You don't want to be there at all. So check your mindset. I think this is one of the most important things. Uh, like, as you were saying before, you yeah. booked the plane ticket. Yeah. Did you have to have a conversation with anyone about that? Like, you had to pay. Correct. You have to pay, and Got that's it. You booked yeah. a hotel, you have to pay. Yeah. That's just how it goes. That's There's right. no conversation that happens that's about right. how you're feeling and yeah. like, oh, I just need to I just need to sell this course first, hotel, and then I'll pay yeah. you. Oh yeah, sure, no worries. Mm. No, it just it's doesn't go down like it's that. It's really simple. Your mindset, you, this is what you need to this is what you need to tell yourself, right? <clears throat> if if my client is if my client's having if I feel bad about asking my client to pay me, right? The, 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 here's the option. Your client has an option. If they don't want to pay you, they can go to Wix and do it themselves, right? If they don't want to do that because it's a pain in the ass and it's going to take them months to get an outcome, then they have to hire someone like you, a professional service provider, like an accountant or a lawyer or a you know, business consultant, a professional service provider, which is what you are, you provide professional services, and they have to pay you accordingly. If they don't want to pay you, they can go and do it themselves at Wix. So you need to get in your mindset that you are providing a professional service, and that professional service comes with a price tag. Yeah, exactly. So this is your business, right? Like you are in control of how you collect payments. You can set everything up. I remember when I actually started charging 50% upfront. That was a fantastic day that I was so nervous about doing that and all the build up about like, oh, what if they say no and all those things. But then I did it and they said yes and then they paid and it was fantastic. So you are in complete control of how this works. You could charge 100% upfront if that works better for your business. You are in complete control of this. So make a decision about how this works, about how you get paid and then just stick to your guns and then that's it. And that's the rule and you stick to it. Just on mindset, uh, Hamza has got a great question here on Facebook. How to deal with the client that says, oh, it's so easy to do it, so please make me a good price. If it's that easy to do it, go and do it yourself. That's my response to that client. I had a client once say to me, I can't believe you charge me so much just to put a Twitter button on my website. Well, if it's that easy, 
do it yourself. What, you called me. Mm. You called me and now, like, what the hell is going on here? You (laughs) called me and now you're going to give me a hard time about my pricing. Mm. No, no. If it's that easy, then do it yourself. Steve Little says, I charge 100% up front for anything under 10 grand. Awesome. Steve, that's great. Awesome. I'm impressed. Yeah. So, Hamza, you know, if someone says it's easy to do it, make me a good price. Oh, sure. If it's that easy, do it yourself. There's a great price. It's free. Go on, off you go. Best price I can give you. I'll be off here serving other clients who value what I do. Yeah, exactly. I'll be taking things off their plate, making it easy for them to focus on what's important in their business Mm. while I take care of what I'm a specialist in. Correct. Exactly what he said. So, quick workflow on getting paid. So, you provide the proposal quote estimate, you send the invoice, you got invoice follow-ups, hopefully not, but you know, you get paid and then you start work, right? And then you do your work and you finish work, you get approval, and then you get paid, right? Whatever percentages and whatever. And then you launch live, okay? So just to summarize that, you don't start work or launch anything until you are paid, okay? You have to get that into your head, all right? It's the, being helpful is absolutely fantastic. And uh, something we talked about on the, the previous episode with uh, discovery workshops is about teaching the, um, teaching the what to do, but not the how to do mm, it. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> so you can give value, a lot of value, without you know, clicking through everything and showing mm. them what plugin to use and how to configure that, yeah, right? Yeah. You can just show them yeah. a couple of things. I mean, and, you know, and you can say, oh, I can't wait to get started on this project so that we can start optimizing your website for search and start getting more traffic from search results. Mm. I can't start, I can't wait to start getting more conversions from your website without telling them how you're going to do it. Mm. And if they say, oh, w- which plugin are you going to use? Are you going to use Sumo Me or are you going to use Optin Monster? My, which ha- this happens, right? My answer is we've got a suite of plugins that are designed to get the, the best result for your website. We'll use whichever one is the best once we start work on the project. But I can't tell you that because we haven't started work on the project because you haven't paid your bill. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So some options for getting paid. So as Troy was talking about before, you can do the milestone payments. Mm -hmm. Definitely something up front. So uh, 50, 30, 20 is what I do. So 50% up front, Mm -hmm. 30% after design and development, and then 20% prior to launch. Good model. That works pretty good. Uh, So another one that um, that I learned about, and I'm I'm really interested in experimenting with this one, is periodic payment by credit card. So instead of milestone payment where the milestone date could potentially change, hopefully not, but it's setting up, let's say you've got a $9,000 website and it's going to be built over three months. So, you know, 90 day project, $9,000. So then you set up a monthly recurring charge for $3,000 and it's going to come out of your client's credit card and that's going to happen and there's nothing that can stop that. That's I like going. That. Yeah, I like that one. Mm, that's a great that's one. Good. So then you don't have to feel bad about it. It just takes all the feelings out of everything, which is awesome. Correct. Yeah. Um, it would be easy to leave that recurring monthly charge on <laughs> yeah. by accident, wouldn't Oops. it, after the project? Yeah, yeah. I did that one. <laughs> yeah. I did that to Patrick. I don't yeah, know. That's right. Patrick, if you're watching. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, mate. I'm still. Yeah, that wasn't an accident. <laughs> sorry. That wasn't an accident. <laughs> Um, so, and there's also 50% payments. So for smaller projects, so that's for like customizing websites and things like that, getting a payment upfront. So let's say something under $1,000, get a payment upfront prior to getting started and then get the final 50 when you, before you move it, um, 50% uh, before you move it over to the live site. So that, that we do that and that works pretty good. And then another one, which a buddy of mine who owns Digital Thing, which is an agency in Melbourne, mm-hmm. they do uh, sprints. So they'll do a two week sprint Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure exactly how much that is, but let's just say that's 10 grand. 10 grand to work with the team for two weeks on your backlog, on your on specific tasks, uh, using Trello to manage or whatever tool you're using to manage, you work with the client as to what's in and what's out. And then you're like, right, so for two weeks, we're gonna work towards this goal. We're gonna work to get these features implemented and that's gonna cost you 10 grand for that two week sprint. Yep. And you get paid 100% of that upfront. Yep. This is how uh, Andy Clark from Stuff and Nonsense works. He works right. in sprints, right. so he blocks out a week and he just works on one project for a week. He gets paid up front, sprints on that project for a week, and then the next week he works on a different project. Love it. Now that's actually a scalable business model too. Yeah. Because you can have multiple teams working on project one project at a time. You know, project manager, designer, developer, whatever. And then the account manager just works with the clients to keep them up to date. You could have multiple little studio teams working in weekly sprints. Love it. Business model. Keely yeah. Worth says, nice camera work. Thanks, Keely. And Brendan Tolley says, a 50%, 30%, and 20%, wouldn't the 30 and 20 be at the same time? No, Brendan, that's, that Brandon, that's the fundamental mistake that most of us make. If you get 50% up front and then the remaining 50% at the end, 
Well, guess what? Sometimes the end never comes along with the 50% balance that you're owed. So you want to get 30% somewhere between getting paid the 50% upfront and getting paid the balance, you want another milestone payment in the middle. And it's usually, I like to do that when we go to the client and say, this is how it's going to look. We've approved the functionality through a prototype. We've now approved the UI, otherwise known as user interface. Now let's build the bloody thing. We need some more money to build the bloody thing. Very common when you build a house, not that I ever have, but my parents did when I was about 10. Uh, we built a house up in the hills and it was very common that the builder would say, well, to the bank, the builder would say, well, we've laid the foundation and we've put the uh, frame up. We're about to lay the bricks, but we need some more money mm -hmm. to pay the brickies. Otherwise, they won't turn up. So the bank then goes and inspects the work and releases a periodic payment, which gets credited to your loan account. Your mortgage increases, the builder gets paid and the house gets built. Huh? It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And the bank makes money in the process by charging you interest. <laughs> That's how that works, beautiful. just in case you were wondering. Absolutely um, beautiful. So we do have an email that, uh, very, very basic email template for, um, for getting paid. And it's basically, hi, first name, hi, client name. As agreed, here's your invoice for the deposit on your website project. The amount of $10 million is due. Uh, payment details are on the invoice. Please pay this as soon as possible to lock in the agreed project schedule. If you're unable to pay this invoice, please let us know as soon as possible so we can reschedule the project. Cheers, your name. That's it. There's nothing more to say. You don't have to put any emotional thing into it at all. So that's all it is to be able to send your invoice. Now, most accounting you platforms and invoicing. Where did you get the name well, there was a smart guy. There was a smart guy that told that to me once. It's a good devoid, one, it? It's almost robotic. It's <laughs> devoid of all emotion, which is the way that payment should be handled. That's right. That's genius. I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah. That's very this good. This is a little, mm. little taste into the WP Elevation program. Mm. Uh, I wish there were templates like this around <laughs> when I started out back in 2000. They'd be helpful, wouldn't they? Whatever it was. Yeah, yeah that would, would, would have been very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Imagine I had to if you had all, this all of these myself. to be able to build out your business. And well, the way now, that I mean, that's just, now you just, that's ridiculous. Does that, tease, exist, it? It? Does that exist, doesn't it? Does that exist, doesn't it? Is there somewhere where you can it's get all of these templates place. that you would use in your WordPress consulting business? Like all these kind of example emails. There's somewhere where you can get all of that in one shop, is there? Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> it would be useful. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Chris, Ma Chris Maladin just joined in. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Thanks for joining in the show. I um, hope this is helpful and entertaining. <laughs> so some of the tools, I'm a big fan of, uh, of some tools and some of the tools that I oh, like this, to use. Is this, is this, is no, it, no, no, no. Some of the tools no, I like to use. No, back in your box, <laughs> back chocolate. Back up, back up, back up. So for project briefs, I use Google Docs, right? Uh, so I like to put together a brief with a client before we get started on anything, and they need to approve it. And um, the, the guy from Digital Thing, Michael something, uh, he was telling me about a reverse brief. So oh. this, could, this could be another episode. But basically, you create the brief and work with the client, and then you have a second call, and you say the brief to them. And then you say, is there anything else that I'm missing? Mm. And they're like, yes. Yeah. And then you expand the brief, basically. So anyway, that's for another episode. Classic uh, active listening it is and mirroring good. technique. Yeah. It's very good. Um, estimates, I use Google Docs or Xero for that. Uh, bookkeeping and invoicing, so Xero and Stripe. Uh, and then recurring payments, I like to use WooCommerce subscriptions and Stripe for that. And time tracking and tracking my margins, I like to use Harvest. Mm. So we've got all these tools and we'll, we'll put them um, in a little, a little takeaway bag for you. I don't know what that is, an article, I guess, sure. that we do after this. Yeah. In the yeah, show yeah. notes. Exactly. Be, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Who knows? Um, the point, I think one of the things with um, care plans, for example. See, one of the problems with get, with doing little jobs, that's what I was going to say. One of, the job, one of the problems with doing little jobs and charging like, oh, you know, 50 bucks to add a testimonial to the website. You've then got to raise an invoice. You've then got to chase the money. You've then got to send the invoice. <clears throat> and all that feeds into waste in your business, which eats into your profitability. So one of the things I love about care plans is that if you've got someone's credit card on file, you don't want to set up on a care plan, invoice them every month, and then have to chase that invoice down and get paid. You want to set them up on a recurring credit card subscription, um, and that just goes through Stripe. It eliminates all that waste out of the business. Now, obviously, you have to add some value and some benefits here to the customer. So you might give them, you say, look, over the, you know, the, the easiest way to do this is, is if you've got existing clients who are spending money on updates and you say, look, over the last year you spent, you know, let's say $1,500 on updates to your website. Well, tell you what, we can, for $97 a month, which is a saving to you, we can do all those updates for the next year and keep all your website up to date and blah, 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 right? Whatever your value proposition is there. 
But the point is that you're improving efficiencies within the business because you've got credit card subscriptions, you're not doing the paperwork, you're not chasing the money, and improving efficiencies improves profit. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, and clients at the end benefit from mm -hmm. that because if you're more profitable, you're going to be around and you're going to be able to help them for longer. That's right. And if you're on a care plan, one of the things I used to do when you're on a care plan is I used to say, every Wednesday, you can call me. So if you've got any questions at all about, about the website or digital marketing, you can call me on Wednesday and I'll answer the phone. Monday, and you'll answer the phone. And I'll answer the phone. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm not going to answer the phone. You can call me any Wednesday. Yeah. And that actually gives them a little bit of peace of mind that because one of the frustrations with clients is, oh, I've been trying to call you for three weeks and you haven't called me back. Well, that's because I don't like you and you're not profitable and you're a pain in the ass. But if you're on a care plan, call me every Wednesday. At least then they know that they've got a regular touch point. Yeah. Exactly. So I use some, um, Calendly to be able to let them, they book in a call with me once a month yep. as part of most Perfect. of my care plans. Yep. Yeah. That works pretty well. So when it comes to um, to these recurring payments yeah. and getting charged, there's, you know, there is a tool that helps. So let's have a look at what that tool is in Tool of the Week. Get ready for Tool of the Week. Today's tool of the week, this week's tool of the week. Oh, how, how good is the light change? Oh, so good, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so here's the thing, right? Max um, decided to add some colour to the segments so that when you're watching the replay on Facebook, you can scroll through and when it gets to blue, is that blue or purple? Blurple. Blurple. When it gets to, we just made up a word. When it gets to blurple, you go, oh, that's the tool of the week. And you can, he calls it the thumb stopper. And you can, here we go, Max is awesome. Damn. And you can <laughs> stop it and go, you can stop it and go, oh, there's the tool of the week section. And the golden nugget is gold. Um, so, you know, I think what we should have awesome. next to the show is we should have a little legend, like, you know, gold There's gold two legends square, already on the show. E oh, ah. ha, ha, <laughs> gold square equals gold nugget. Yeah. Blurple equals tool of the week. I love it. Little key. Love it. So, yeah, this week's Tool of the Week is WooCommerce Subscriptions by Prosperous. Ah. Uh, WooCommerce Subscriptions helps you get go. paid on subscription using WooCommerce. Go. It's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? That's our buddy Brent Shepard yeah. from, uh, from um, Prosperous. Prosperous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. He lives in San Francisco these days, I think. Is he back oh, in I Australia? Do you know? Or he, don't know. He's been in San Francisco for a couple of years. Yeah. Had a baby over there as well. Oh, well, his yeah, wife did. Backstory and everything. Love wow. the Brent Shepard. He's a yeah. legend. Haven't seen him for a long time. If you're watching Brent, how you going? Miss you, buddy. Time to hang out, dude. Where are you? What's going on? Um, so yeah, that's the tool of the week. Yeah, WooCommerce exactly. So you can set up care plan pages on your website. They can click, they can add your, your WooCommerce product to the cart and then you can uh, charge them per, um, via subscription, basically. So you can say, yep, you can just go ahead and sign up to one of our care plans and then don't do anything until they sign up and payments come out automatically. Beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Keely Worth says, what system do you guys use such as Manage WP, etc.? Yes, that's correct, <laughs> Exactly. Keely. Manage WP. No, etc. There are others <laughs> that you can use, but we use Manage WP. Mm. I've heard hey, a lot of good things about Main WP yep, as well. Or Infinite WP. There's yep. a whole bunch of them, but we use Manage WP. Yep. Just want to bring your attention to something before we wrap the show up, and that is the light <laughs> counter <laughs> the never <laughs> has gone up. Right? I mean, a couple of weeks ago, that was uh, 11,400 and something. Mm. It's now gone up to 11,781. Mm. That's pretty good. Now, and that's just because we continue to put out what we think is useful, slightly entertaining content for our target market. And people like it. Yeah. And paying for the click farms? Is that the other Oh, that's that right. That's yeah. right. Paying for the click farms and the yeah. people to like it. That's right. The robots to like it. That's yeah, exactly just, right. Just a little aside there. So I have this thing called synesthesia. Right? Synesthesia. So, synesthesia. Synesthesia. I will I see colours for numbers is my synesthesia. It's like the crossing over of senses. Oh. Yeah, really? It's weird. So so eleven eleven four for me, so eleven thousand four hundred. The four is actually like a goldy yellow colour. Right. So for me to remember eleven thousand four hundred is like quite oh. easy because I can picture the colours oh, together. Right. So it's like grey <coughs> and then yellow. But then eleven seven is grey and then red. Right. Because seven is red. Really? I think it was 11781, which is gray, red, black, gray. Really? 11781? Yeah, so when you actually look at those colors. No, not when I look at it, oh. when I think about it. Oh. Oh, really? So there you go. That's just the yeah, acid, the dude. <laughs> just got to get off the gear, mate. Yeah. That's what's going on there. So because Troy's going through economic <laughs> hardship, he's decided to give us all acid instead of getting. That's right, exactly. And I thought that was fine. That's, that's fine. right. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Keely Wood says, great There's show, no guys. There's no behind us either. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Well done, Keely. Fantastic. Thanks for being a part of it. And Steve Little says, Blurple's been around for ages. Oh, bullshit, Steve. We made it up. <laughs> we made awesome. up Blurple. We How made up Blurple. We're going to trademark it. <laughs> So if you like the show, please like, share, and uh, tell your grandma about it. Uh, please send it to someone who you think could benefit from getting paid, right, and doing it effectively. Please uh, like us on Facebook, you know, up the numbers for Troy's vanity metrics. And uh, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, we'll have some tutorials, some more tutorials coming out. You'll also be notified when the show goes live on, well, not goes live, but is published onto mm. YouTube as mm. well. Uh, you click the little bell icon and it'll notify you when we've got some new tutorials and new content out. Well done, that was a very sophisticated call to action and you're, you're like one of those air hostesses that recites the safety video without a script. Oh really? That's I very good, yeah, cheers, well done. Man. Next week, I'm going to be in the Philippines hanging oh, out really? with that. Yeah, that's right. Didn't Who's you? How did you not in? know that? Oh, well, no. I'll, they'll chime me in. I mean, Jim oh, can really? sit in the hot seat if she likes, Absolutely. but I imagine that they'll get chimed in via Zoom, right? right? And come up on the screen there. Well, if Jim's running the show, we'll have to see if you're, yeah. you're late. It'll be 8 a.m. That's right. It'll be 8 a.m. Filipino time when I'm in Manila hanging out with our, our staff over there in our office. The first time we're flying over there to meet our staff, it's going to be very exciting. That's very exciting. So I'll, they'll, get, they'll chime me in from the Philippines because the internet in the Philippines is actually better than that is here in Australia, to be honest. Um, so I look forward to seeing you there. And then, not long after that, we're off to the States. We're going to San Diego for our WP Elevation Live Mastermind events, um, June 28 and 29. We are there uh, for two days of live events. If you want more information, leave us a comment uh, with San Diego in the comments, and we will hunt you down and pitch you like a madman and get you into those live events. <laughs> Um, uh, that's about I'm it. pretty excited Yeah, for I'm that. super pumped about yeah. San Diego, man. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, say yeah. San Diego again. A little bit of weed keeps coming out. Yeah, San Diego, San Diego, San Diego. Man needs some new, confidence, new Pat. Table. Um, <laughs> all right. Hey, we've descended into the gutter pretty quickly, as usual. So, time to wrap up. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week in whatever shape or form that takes. Uh, until then, my name is Troy Dean. And I'm Simon Kelly. And remember, knowledge is power. And silence is golden. <laughs>